Today we're going to be doing an in-depth feature overview of the whole chassis. Hey guys, it's Josh here from MDT. I am a product designer here and the lead designer on the ACC Elite chassis, which I have in front of me here. Let's just jump right into it and start with the butt stock. So, uh, let's jump right into it and start off with the buttstock, which has got by far the most new changes uh, on this whole chassis. So, running through some of the new features on this buttstock, this is our SRS X Elite buttstock that'll ship standard with this chassis. Minimum length of pull of about 12 and a half inches in most inlets, depending on your trigger and your action setup. Um, and some of your adjustments, and we can adjust all the way out to almost 15 inches of length of pull, again, depending on action and some of your accessory setup and triggers. On the feature set here, we'll work back to front. So installed on this chassis, we have the one inch length of pull spacer, which will ship in the box with the, with the buttstock itself. It actually is not a true one inch length of pull spacer, about 800 thou, and it's designed specifically for this buttstock to give you just that extra range of adjustment of actual length of pull extension. You do still have your up and down adjustment as you can see here. We've got a tool list adjust on your butt pad height. And on the spacer itself, you can lock the butt pad into the spacer such that it won't move under recoil or any of your positional changes or anything like that. So we've got a couple set screws locking it down on both sides. So this is gonna be essentially one piece if you're gonna be running that. It's made out of aluminum. It's not gonna to be too heavy, so you're not gonna throw off your balance of your gun if you need, do need that extra length of pull. All your adjustments on your butt pad height, your uh, cant and the translation of the butt pad are all done through this little piece here. So whether or not you're running the spacer, you still get all of your butt pad adjustment. As I showed, you've got your butt pad height adjust on this little tool list knob on the side. You've got your butt pad cant, which you can cant uh, back and forth about five degrees either way, which is plenty. Um, even if you're shooting on a bit of an, an odd angle and you, know, you really wanna fit your butt pad to yourself, you can adjust all of those features in here with cant five degrees, and then you can move back and forth uh, about almost three quarters of an inch uh, in these actual slots on the butt pad. So those are done with just two one eighth Allen keys, which we'll get to, but the tool is actually included for that. And then if you want to adjust any of the features um, for your length of pull or your cheek riser height on the butt stock, we've got these little tool list knobs on the front, which you just loosen, you press down, and then you can adjust in and out. So making your adjustments is fairly easy and toolless. You make all of your back to front adjustments, set the butt pad wherever you want it or your length of pull wherever you want it. And then you lock that down with the knob on the front here. Same thing with your cheek riser height. You would loosen the knob, you push down on the actual knob itself, and then you make your adjustments, release it, snaps back into place, it's all spring loaded. You can also quickly remove it if necessary. And then you just lock that down by tightening the knob one more time. So tool is adjustment, very quick adjustment and tons of adjustment on this actual buttstock itself. Um, this is the most toolless adjustment we've ever built into a buttstock. And we're really excited to see um, how the, the market reacts to it and how people really um, use this on the fly. Because if you're changing between positions, uh, if you're changing between shooting styles, you can quickly adapt the chassis to fit you or return everything back to its zero position and really collapse the buttstock down small. As I had uh, alluded to earlier, we've got a couple of tools that are hidden underneath the cheek riser here. So we have some slots built in uh, and we will include a 1 8 Allen key as well as a T10 Allen key. And both between those two uh, Allen keys or hex keys, they should adjust just about every major accessory on your chassis minus your main action screws, which are done with a 3 16 um, For most actions, sometimes they're gonna be metric and that'll change, but these two um, hex keys will adjust all of your mag latch uh, adjustments, your butt pad adjustments, a lot of your M-lock accessories, your grip, um, connector bar, just a whole bunch of commonized um, hardware all across the, the whole chassis. So those two are hidden under there and they're just held in place with a magnet, which you can just quickly drop your Allen keys back into. And if you wanted to switch that out for a different size uh, hex key or anything like that, as long as it's a magnetized piece of steel, you can just drop it right in there and it'll hold itself in place. Or if it's not, it's gonna flop loose. So 
everything is tightened back up. Um, cheek riser as well. You don't have any uh, cant or translation available in cheek riser, unfortunately, but we do have some front to back adjustment, uh, about an inch of adjustment there. So depending on where you're gonna run your length of pull um, and how you like to have your cheek riser situated in reference to your scope, you can adjust that back and forth as need be. Moving forward on the buttstock, we still have the QD holes, which we build in as standard. Uh, so QD cups built into the buttstock. Um, we have these adjustment points down here at the bottom. We also have an M-lock slot underneath on the underside of our, of our buttstock as standard, which M-lock profile, you can put a rail on here, you can put a monopod, um, you know, anything you'd really like to mount to the bottom of your buttstock, that's an option there. So keeping that as standard. Um, we also have pocketing available for our MDT rubber dampeners, as well as a weight that'll be specific to this buttstock as well. So all of these pockets will stay, remain uh, the same on the ACC Elite and the SRS X Elite uh, buttstock, so that it'll be very easy to uh, add a three quarter pound, approximately three quarter pound weight, or all of the dampeners, or none, or all of them, depending on kind of what you want as your full uh, setup on your chassis. Another feature I wanted to go over was the cheek riser and how we are now moving to a lot of foam clad cheek risers on most of our chassis, especially on our premier uh, higher end uh, flagship chassis. So this is uh, our injection molded cheek riser, again, specific for this chassis, mirrors the thinner cheek riser profile that you'd find on our elite cheek riser right now. And again, it's foam covered just so that if you're gonna be shooting in the cold or wet, um, then it does give you a nice comfortable place that you're constantly uh, returning to. Moving forward from there, we've got our connector bar and grip, which are both specific to this chassis currently, and they are also shipping uh, in the box in the full chassis kit. So the connector bar is something that we've gone over quite a bit as far as uh, how it adds to the rigidity of the chassis, how it provides a very different feel and a lot more placement for your bag on the chassis. And this is something that's also modular. So with a 1 8 Allen key, you've got a screw on each side of the back here and one screw on the bottom of the grip post. You can easily and quickly remove it if it's something you don't want, um, or if it's something that's gonna get in the way of you shooting a stage or something like that. We also do include a little spacer in there. So if you do wanna remove the connector bar, you can fully remove it and then add a spacer in place so the whole front of your buttstock is still nice and smooth and you're not, you haven't got a, a sort of jagged slot in the front there. And then your grip, you'll just have a small uh, gap here at the back where the connector bar would attach. Moving forward into the grip, we have an overmolded grip that's the same profile as our current MDT Elite grip. This one, of course, just has this, the cutout of the back for the connector bar and the adjustments are a little bit different. So two adjustment screws on either side, as opposed to, we've got a couple different adjustment screws on the current Elite grip where they're in from the bottom um, and then a couple screws at the top here. And this one adjusts a lot more like our current MDT Premier uh, vertical grip that slides back and forth and you lock it into place wherever you're happy with it. And again, all done with 1 8 hex keys, which is stored under your cheek riser. So if on the fly you wanted to make an adjustment to your grip, very easy and quickly you can do that as well. And that's pretty much an overview of the buttstock. Um, the actual shape of it has changed a little bit as well. Uh, if we just look at the side profile of the buttstock itself, we've actually raised everything quite a bit, keeping the um, shooter recoil path in line with the shoulder a lot more. And this is something that we've talked about a lot with our uh, pro shooter team is lowering the bore center line or raising the buttstock axis as much as we can to better allow the shooter to stay behind the gun, stay behind the scope and really track everything down range. So if you look at this compared to a lot of our other buttstocks, um, you'll see that this lower edge is actually quite a bit higher and this upper edge is also quite a bit higher. Again, moving your shooter's shoulder position up and in line with the recoil. We've also removed a lot of the dips uh, and anything that would reduce rigidity and stiffness in this axis, um, such that the whole buttstock itself doesn't wanna bend or flex or move under recoil. It's a very, very solid uh, buttstock with, again, that quick adjust and very modular um, adaptability for all types of shooters for you know very short uh, shooters and use shooters all the way up to very tall shooters and people who would prefer that long length of pull. Um, moving forward into the chassis body, um, the biggest thing, of course, is these thumb shelves on either side. Historically, this has been something we've machined into the chassis. We've had a little ramp uh, built into each side, whereas on the ACC Elite, we've gone to the polymer injection molded thumb shelves. 
um, but we've used a specific type of material that we've specified that makes them feel and act the closest thing to aluminum we can, but still fairly warm to the touch uh, and still provides really good texture um, and good user interaction, tac tactile kind of feel on the thumb shelves. And because these are M-Lock compatible, this is actually just an M-Lock slot we have on the back here. You can remove this and add it anywhere along your forend or anywhere else you have an M-Lock uh, compatible hole um, or slot such that you can put this thumb shelf pretty much anywhere you would like it to be. Um, so if you don't actually feel that you need one on either side, you can move them around as need be or remove them uh, and potential other accessories in the future there. Going forward from that, everything else in the center of the chassis has remained mostly the same other than the fact that we've added a lot of material in there and we've added a lot of rigidity. Um, so this section in here, you might see is a little bit thicker than an ACC square mirror or most of the chassis we um, currently put out. And that again is just really adding to the rigidity. The next really important feature we wanna to touch on is the adjustable mag latch. And this is something that we have brought over from all the lessons um, and everything we've learned from the JAE Gen 4 or G4. Um, and this is basically our take on the JAE mag latch uh, as they had had it machined. And this is a very similar profile to our current uh, ambidextrous mag latch that ships on just about all of our chassis at this point. And it has an adjustment range up of about one and a half millimeters or 60 thou and down two and a half millimeters, uh, it's about a hundred thou. So it's a ton of adjustment range. And really what this allows you to do is tune your magwell and your mag latch height to your intended purpose. So if you would like to um, fit a specific type of magazine, especially with rimfire magazines, this is extremely important, um, or double stack, double feed, AW type magazines, uh, this mag latch is, is huge for that. We also have certain calibers that need to sit a little bit higher, a little bit lower, angle the magwell a little bit. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with this mag latch, and this is all fully adjustable with that T10 Allen key that comes shipped in the buttstock. So there's just two screws on it. You can make all your adjustments and lock it up super tight. Um, unlike other adjustable magwell or adjustable mag latch designs that are currently out there, you're not gonna have any slippage, nothing's gonna uh, move on you, and it is also very quick and very easy to adjust. So we're really proud of this design. We have the small feature that we built into our, a lot of our chassis now, and this is only available on some inlets. The uh, bottom adjustment uh, hole here, this is actually just a slot that we have built into the chassis, and it allows you to reach up and actually make trigger adjustments without having to remove your whole action. So this has become a bit of a standard for us now, and that kind of couples in with you know some of the adjustability without having to, to um, really tear apart your whole gun, which is really what we're working on. In the Magwell, um, the aesthetics look very similar to the ACC Premier. However, we've extended the height of the barricade stop a little bit, about half an inch, um, really giving it a whole bunch of extra height in there. So even if you're running a full 12 round magazine, you still have very good protection on the front. It's also a little bit more vertical, about five degrees more vertical than the ACC Premier. Again, just really giving it that solid uh, barricade stop positioning. We can't see it super well right now, but we have some dowels that are optional uh, add-ons in the actual inside of the magwell, and that allows you to tune the fit of the mag uh, of the magwell to your specific mag. So we have four dowels, uh, two on either side, and then two at the front. The four side dowels have very small amounts of protrusion into the magwell, and that is really just to take up the extra added um, potential slop side to side movement you might get in a mag, which you might see as rattle. Some people really hate that feature, um, but some people love it because you can really quickly insert magazines. So we've got the optional add-on for the side dowels just to take out that extra movement. And the front dowels have a lot more protrusion into the magazine well to take up 22 uh, or rimfire specific magazines that tend have a tendency to be undersized and tilt forward. So if you have an, AC, uh, or an AICS compatible rimfire magazine, these front dowels in here, um, especially for polymer magazines, are very, very useful. Moving forward from there, um, I guess it's another one of those things that's a little bit hard to see. We do have steel action screw bushings under both of the action screws. So we've press fit in hardened steel bushings that we uh, custom made specifically for this chassis. And they work in conjunction with some steel, hardened steel washers under your action screws. So very similar to the ACC Premier. Um, what we're trying to do is really, again, like everything in the system, make it as rigid and as solid as possible. We want to reduce the chance of anything backing off or loosening up. Um, and we've press fit them in place such that they're at the right height 
and coupled with the washers, you should be able to install your action screws as normal. But if you find that you're not getting the right amount of action screw engagement, which is about three turns, you can remove the washer from the action screw and then reinstall it and you get just that little bit more of engagement uh, between your action screw and your washer. So again, pretty hard to see it right now, but you've got uh, action screw bushings under the front and rear action screw. They're press fit in place. There should be no need to ever remove them and it'd be very hard to actually ever remove them, but the washers are completely user interchangeable as need be. So uh, depending on your action style and your action fitment, you can remove those uh, as necessary. But also be careful, if you remove the washers, there is a chance that you can actually block your bolt from cycling. So ensure once you've tried removing a washer that you can still cycle your bolt. Especially on three lug actions, we find that removing the washers is quite useful. Another one of the foreign features is the two drilled and tapped side accessory holes. Again, these are m -lock compatible. This is something we've just brought over from the ACC Premier. Um, there's two on either side. They do sit at an m -lock spacing. However, you just attach your accessories right to the two drilled and tapped holes. These are, these are used with our MDT Baker wings, our two round holders, our data card holders, or any optional aftermarket accessory that does work with m -lock. Everything forward of there on the forend is definitely a little bit less noticeable than a lot of the rear changes we've made. Um, but the foreign rigidity and the foreign thickness is significantly beefier. Um, <laughs> most people will pick up this chassis and say, wow, okay, that's you know noticeable. Um, the foreign itself has got about 50% more material in it now. Um, it has a lot more rigidity and we've also been very cognizant of how we've removed material out of it. So the whole front section of the chassis should be a lot less prone to uh, bending both in a torsional manner and also in a uh, standard just 2D manner. So if you're loading a bipod and you're pushing into it, you shouldn't have very much bending or any flex, even with no weights installed in the forend. Um, and that was one of the really big improvements over the ACC Premier that we've made was to add this foreign rigidity in here. However, along the whole bottom, you'll still see the same weight holes. The M-Lock slots are exactly the same as the ACC Premier. So all of the internal and external weights are still fully compatible with this forend. And that was something we wanted to make sure that people didn't have to go out and buy $400 worth of weights all over again, because this is still fully compatible with the one piece and the five piece internal weights. Um, along the top of the forend, we have a whole row of Swiss cheese <laughs> threaded and unthreaded holes and they are for optional forend accessories. So we've got a control bridge, we've got an NV bridge, and possibly more coming in the, in the future. And the reasoning for those, uh, the NV bridge is fairly straightforward. We've designed that in conjunction with some of our team shooters who have access to clip-on night vision um, or any other possible potential uh, clip-on forend accessories that would go in front of your scope. Um, and we've actually lowered that to ensure that it will co-witness with a appropriately sized rail and scope mount, um, working at about a 1.5 or 1.55 inch scope mount on an integrated rail, like you'd see here. Um, we've made sure that the NV bridge actually does correctly co-witness. The control bridge is a little bit more um, open-ended. It's a little bit more user specific and neither of those will ship with the chassis. Um, but the control bridge is an optional accessory you can add anywhere along the foreign and you can also stack these bridges um, and it just gives you more control over the tip of the forend. So if you're behind the gun and you don't wanna reach up and grab your hot barrel, um, we have this optional hood that sits very low down, won't impede your scope height, uh, won't get in your way, but it gives you that extra little bit to reach up and, and grab. Um, coupled with some MDT Baker wings or one of these little M-Lock thumb shells, you can use the control bridge and it gives you a ton of extra foreign control. So that's what all these drilled and tapped holes are. Um, typically three sets, is, three sets of bridges, either control bridges or NV bridges will fit on here very well. Um, and if you do three NV bridges, they're not at a 20 degree MO or 20 MOA angle. They're at a flat angle, meaning that you could pretty much create yourself a control uh, or fully enclosed um, NV compatible forend using those bridges. There are again, optional accessories in the future that we might add on to these holes, but there is no way of plugging them other than uh, putting a screw in. Um, nothing that we currently offer though. Moving back to the underside of the forend, we do have Arlock compatible um, underside holes. 
So these are designed around the new RRS R-Lock standard, meaning that if you're running a tripod or a bipod or any other foreign accessory that has that R-Lock plunger in it, this foreign will work uh, perfect for it. Same thing with the RRS dovetail. This is actually a gauged and specced dovetail to the RRS standard, meaning that uh, all of their lever clamps um, as well as all other aftermarket ARCA accessories, including the MDT sky pods and ground pods, will go on this forend, um, no issues. And again, we do actually gauge that to the RRS standard to make sure it's, it's built correctly. And that runs the full length of the forend, so you've got about an 18 inch length forend uh, of usable space on this. And it is also just a tiny bit longer than the ACC Premier. So one thing we've also included on this chassis is optional grip tape, which will ship in the box. Um, completely optional, it's up to the user whether or not they would like to install it or some of it, all of it, and where they want it. So on the underside of the forend, much like the ACC Premier, we have a pocket that has, uh, it's been recessed specifically so that the grip tape sits uh, flush or below flush with the forend. And we now have the laser cut grip tape um, coming in the box for that. So really that grip tape is there just to provide you extra grip on a bag or prop or anything you'd be resting your forend on. Um, and a lot of our pro shooter team had been using those on the Premier. Another thing we had done as a suggestion as part of our team is we've included some, op again, optional grip tape for the side of your trigger guard here, such that when you're transitioning between positions or you're um, just moving around with the gun, you have a, a spot to constantly index your finger on. So we have a hockey stick looking piece of grip tape, for lack of a better word, um, that's optional, or we have just a small oval, and we have same profile mirrored left and right. So you can put grip tape anywhere in here that you'd like, or really anywhere on the chassis that you find that you want that constant index point. Um, and we found that talking to the, to the pro team, really what they wanted was that constant reference point so that when they're not on the trigger, they've got somewhere to come back to and they know that their, their uh, finger is gonna be in a safe place. Another thing I kinda wanna touch on is we've also got the QD cups right at the very tip of the forend. So coupling with the ones at the rear, if you're not running any other um, forend accessories, we now have these built in to the forend. So you could, you know, as out of the box, run a QD sling front and rear um, without any issues there. And finally, the last thing sort of feature wise to, to go over is the aesthetic upgrade. So this is a bit of a different look than our, our current chassis. Um, you know, we've tried to retain the MDT um, livery, I guess, the MDT uh, aesthetic throughout the whole chassis. We've tried to keep the lines and the pocketing similar to what we currently do, but we've made some, some big upgrades as far as the foreign look, the, uh, the sort of rigidity, the the aggressive styling we've added to this whole thing. So I think we've done, uh, our design team did an amazing job on that. Um, and we've done a full aesthetic upgrade to this chassis just to make it look the best competition chassis in the world. So we've gone over pretty much the whole chassis and all of the main features on everything that comes out of the box. Um, there's a whole bunch of optional accessories that we're currently producing and will be continuing to produce for this chassis. But if there's something we haven't gone over here, um, be sure to check out the website at ngttac.com. Um, or contact our customer support. Everything will be found online there as well.